And now to talk about our module of the week, let's bring in Martin Anderson Klutz, a senior solutions engineer, Aqua, a maintainer of a number of Drupal modules of his own. Martin, what do you have for us this week? Thanks, Nick. I thought this week we would talk about the Entity Share module, which is really a collection of modules to syndicate content between Drupal websites. It was originally created in March of 2015. Uh, the current version is an 8.x-3.0-RC4, which was created in April of 2022. But the dev branch is actually D10 ready and has seen commits just in the past week. So it's very actively maintained, uh, seemingly preparing for a release potentially. Um, there are 42 open issues, 10 of which are bugs, and it's currently in use by almost 3,000 websites. The most active maintainer right now seems to be Grim Reaper, who is a maintainer of a list of his own modules, as well as maintaining, uh, or sorry, being a frequent speaker and organizer of Drupal events in Europe. Um, now, digging into Entity Share a little bit more, it supports not just nodes, but also taxonomy terms, media, and other kinds of entities. You basically configure one site to be the server that provides out those entities, and you can specify sort of which content types or bundles will be available and in which languages. And then you would set up one or more other sites to be configured as clients, pointing at that server with the necessary authentication information. A client can also potentially pull from more than one entity server if necessary. Now, as part of the sync, it will also recursively import all referenced entities and uh, you can also <clears throat> sync additional revisions. So um, there's the ability then to, to even do sort of a visual diff between different revisions. So if you've got kind of local changes, you can compare those, those changes uh, before importing them. Uh, there's a, a companion module, Entity Share Cron, to make the sync process scheduled. And there are also companion modules to use the uh, web sub protocol for the sync. And there's a, a companion module as well for ECA integration. Uh, the project page also has links to presentations and blog articles that explain how the module uh, works and you know how it uh, is used. Uh, if you're interested in sort of digging more into you know understanding the module, so let's open it up to talk about Entity Share. I'm interested. Has anybody used this module like in a in a real world scenario? No, no, I have not. I haven't, but uh, you know, Martin, it's an interesting thing that um, you credit the maintainers, but it's also worth noting the supporting organizations because John, you're asking that question. It's like smile, an agency I haven't heard of, Lullabot, but Carnegie Mellon, and I cannot read the last. Actancy. Yeah, I'm dyslexic, so I will just struggle with that. But the hint here is that Carnegie Mellon's using it actively on their site and their properties, which is a good indication that, you know, it's being used at scale in a real world situation. I wonder uh, if it solves the content um, staging issue that a lot of bigger organizations have where they want to stage the content in a dev environment and then not have to re-enter that content. Um, yeah, it does, it, it does look like it was, so in deploy was probably the set of modules that yeah. people would have used in D7. And it looks like this being sort of, you know, available for modern versions of Drupal um, is kind of the successor to that. Yeah, it does. It does solve that that problem, um, Nick. From what I've what I've read, I, I was telling Martin that I, I actually just got off a call talking about this module for a project that I'm working on. So I was just curious um, if anybody had used it and what their uh, take on it was. But um, it does seem to uh, help in moving content from staging to production and, and facilitating the process for that. So yeah. um, I also. I was also going to, I think it could also be useful in the environment where you have a bunch of related sites and maybe some of that content is shared or needs yep. to be shared. So I think the staging environment is probably the most common use case, but I could also see there are certain environments where you build content on one site, but you might need parts of that content or, you know, parts of those entities to maybe be available on other sites yep. as well. Yeah. So I think, I think one use case I've heard of, um, and I don't remember where I heard this of was like shared, a shared taxonomy where like somebody adds a taxonomy to one site and it needs to kind of like, uh, uh, proliferate out to other, other sites. That's a, a, a interesting use case. So definitely something that, uh, once maybe one of us, one of us uses it, we can come and we could talk about it further and, and how it helped, helped or hurt in that, uh, scenario. 
I think the the maybe one other thing that I'll add is that in addition to sort of that one to many way of content sharing, it looks like you can also use it to sort of many to many. So all all sites sharing their content with each other as well. It sounds like you could get an exciting recursion loop there <laughs> as well, but you probably have to be a little more careful there. But yeah, it, or maybe use it as an aggregator, like if you have a many to one uh, type situation too. So um, yeah, definitely interesting. Well, thank you, Martin, as always, uh, uh, an on-point uh, module of the week uh, for our topic this week. So we'll chat with you next week.